Ashley, we're live. Ashley, we're live and ready to go. All right, Mayor Barnett, you're ready to go. Are we here yet? That's not, that's, that's, that's Dennis Feeney, uh, Ken Massey, Dennis Feeney, Mike Barnett, City of Farmington. We didn't make the cut. I don't know what to do. If everybody's on, if you can put your uh, microphones on mute, the mayor's going to call the meeting to order. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, Farmington Hills. Welcome to the regular city council meeting of January 11th, 2021 <clears throat> at 7.30 p.m. We will um, soon get to the heart of the agenda, but I would like you to know that if you would like to dial in and visit us on the Zoom link, you're more than welcome to do so. The number is 1-312-626-7000. And the webinar ID number is 934-6550-1478. And this information is also available at the government website for the City of Farmington Hills at fhgov.com. Um, we will uh, begin the meeting by calling it to order and start with the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you'll all join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for adding the flag. It's been yeah. lonely doing that all by myself and again. <laughs> Um, now we will do the um, roll call. Please give your name and the city and uh, state in which you are dialing in from as a council member. Mayor Barnett. Vicki Barnett, Mayor, Farmington Hills, Michigan. Council members Bolaware. Jackie Bolaware, Farmington Hills, Michigan. Bridges. Council member uh, Michael Bridges, Farmington Hills, Michigan. Noel. Valerie Knoll, Farmington Hills, Michigan. Massey. Ken Massey, Farmington Hills, Michigan. And Newland. Muted, she's muted. Council member Newland, you're she's muted. muted. <laughs> you're muted. Is it plugged in? There I am. Okay, Mary Newland, Farmington Hills, Michigan. Thank you. Okay, now we will move on to uh, the approval of the regular session meeting agenda. Uh, does anybody want to make a motion or changes? Madam Mayor. Yes. Madam Mayor, I move the council will approve the agenda as published. Is there a second? Ms. Mary Newland, I support. Okay, it's been moved by Michael Bridges, supported by Mary Newland to approve the agenda. This is a roll call vote. Council members Newland? Yes. Bolaware? Yes. Massey? Yes. Bridges? Yes. Knoll? Yes. And Mayor Barnett? Yes. And now we will begin with um, item number two on the agenda. And uh, this is a sad retirement for me, but it's a very, very good thing. It is a proclamation recognizing Magistrate Dennis Feeney for exemplary service. And uh, Mr. Bridges, would you read that proclamation, please? Yes, I will. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, proclamation 47 District Court Magistrate Dennis J. Feeney in recognition of exemplary service to the citizen of Farmington Hills. Whereas Dennis J. Feeney has served the 47th District Court of Farmington Hills and Farmington with honor and distinction as a magistrate since June 9th, 1983, a span of over 37 years. And whereas Magistrate Feeney was originally appointed by then Chief Justice Margaret Schaefer 
and served during the tenure of all five district judges in the court history. Judge Michael Hand, Judge Margaret Schaefer, Judge Frederick Harris, Judge Marla Parker, and Judge James Brady. And whereas prior to the district court system, Magistrate Feeney father, Honorable Sylvester J. Feeney served as the Farmington Municipal Judge until his death in 1965, when uh, Associate Municipal Judge Michael Ham became Michael Municipal Judge and Magistrate Feeney was appointed to the vacant Associate Judge position where he served from 1965 through 1968. Whereas Magistrate Feeney, Feeney has maintained a private law practice first in the city of Detroit beginning in 1964 and then in Farmington Hills since 1982. Whereas in 2019, the judges recognized his outstanding public service by dedicating the magistrate courtroom in the 47th district courthouse in his honor. And whereas Magistrate Feeney has long been affiliated with many local service clubs and charities, including the Farmington Exemplar Club, Our Ladies of Sorrows, St. Vincent de Paul Society, Golden Pathways, Starfish Family Services. And whereas he is a graduate of the University of Detroit Jesuit High School, University of Notre Dame and University of Detroit Law School. And whereas he has resided in, this, in Farmington, Farmington Hills community since 1952. Been married to Lynn for 54 years and has five adult children, Megan, Dennis, Kitty, Kevin, and Marl. Mar Mar now therefore be it resolved that Vicki Barnett, the mayor of the city of Farmington Hills on behalf of city council, do hereby honor and thank Magistrate Dennis Feeney for his loyal service to the people of our city and encourage everyone to respect and recognize the work of this outstanding, dedicated individual. Very good. Um, Magistrate Feeney, would you like to say anything? Yes, Mayor Barnett, thank you very much. Uh, I know many of you folks there. Uh, I'm happy to say that it's always wonderful to get this kind of an honor while you're still alive to appreciate it. And so I appreciate the fact that you folks have done this for me. Uh, it, it, and it's, it's very, very, uh, very lovely of you to do this. It was something that I didn't expect. Uh, and I've been in Farmington and Farmington Hills for, for a great many years, uh, graduated actually from Our Lady of Sarah's grade school. Uh, uh, so you, you recognize how long ago that's been. Uh, I still practice law sort of diagonally from where you folks are, uh, the city hall right now. And that's what I'm planning to continue to do for a while. I, have, I, I must tell you that the district court in Farmington, Farmington Hills, is the very best district court in the whole state. The judges are very congenial and very collegiate and, and, and wonderful people to work for. Even though over the years they have had different judicial philosophies, they have never ever been anything other than outstanding uh, jurists. And our court is probably the friendliest court in the whole state, the most wonderful place to work for. And we owe that to uh, not only to the judges, but to the administration of the court. And it's just been my great honor and pleasure uh, to work for this court. Uh, and they were very, very lovely two years ago when they dedicated the, the uh, courtroom to me in my honor. And, and uh, uh, for that, I'm very grateful as well. So it's been a, Farmington Hills has been a wonderful place to raise our family our five children uh, were all born and raised here. Uh, and uh, I'm so fortunate that uh, my oldest daughter now lives in the community as well. My son, Dennis, lives in Howell. Maura is in uh, Ada, Michigan, which is, which is close by. Uh, unfortunately, Kitty is in Baton Rouge and we don't see her as much as we would, we would love to. And Kevin is in Illinois and we don't see him as often, particularly now with the pandemic. Uh, but gratefully, uh, I see my brother and uh, my dear brother, Michael, and uh, sister-in-law are on, on, online as well. And I'm just very grateful to have lived in this community, which is probably the very best place that I can think of where we could have lived and raised our family. And to all of you, I'm extremely grateful and thankful for what you've done for me tonight. So thank you very much. It's our pleasure. I see... Uh... 
Mr. Walsh, the administrator of the court is on uh, Zoom with us. Would you like to say anything? Yeah, I'm, I'm not only on Zoom, but both judges are watching on the webinar as well. You can't see them on the screen. I'm getting a little teary eyed here. Uh, I've now worked with Magistrate Feeney for 25 years and uh, he's been an excellent jurist. And those of you that know him know that he's an even better person. Um, he's taught me a lot. Um, I was a young punk of 35 when I started here, and Dennis has taught me a lot over those 25 years that we've been together, and I will miss him dearly on a, on a daily basis around the courthouse. So uh, I, I know I speak for the judges when I say that we wish Dennis and Lynn nothing but good health and happiness for many, many years of retirement, and uh, he, he, he's always going to be remembered because we've got a plaque that says that magistrate courtroom is in his name and that was something that was very important to all of us so congratulations Dennis Lynn it's nice to see you there and all the family that's on the webinar as well I'm sorry Judge uh, Brady and Judge Parker can't uh, be seen right now but they're both watching and I'm sure they'd love to uh, participate but um, congratulations Dennis and thank you for the opportunity to talk mayor thank you uh, does anyone on council have anything to add? Madam Mayor? Ken, yes. Mr. Thank Hansen. you, Madam Mayor. And Magistrate Feeney, Len, good to see you. Well-deserved. Uh, we've known each other for a number of years and a whole lot of different capacities. And I just want to say that as you're retiring and we've got a great proclamation, but really it doesn't sum up the great work that you've been doing and the work that the 47th district court has done you have worked with good people the entire time but that said you're a stellar guy and thank you for all the things that you've done for this community and all the things that you will continue to do for the community but with that um congratulations well deserved thank you thank you hey, uh valerie knoll uh, yeah, it's um, it's been a pleasure to uh, get to know you and work with you over the years, Dennis and Lynn. And um, not only I, I feel like I'll probably echo what's already been said, but I, I just want to agree with that, that it's not just your work at the 47th District Court, but you have been so involved in the community and a variety of different nonprofits. And um, we always see you out and about. Um, so and, and hopefully you continue to live in the community. I know you've got children all over and a lot of family, but uh, hopefully we keep you here. And uh, it's um, thank you for your contributions and uh, for your family support as well, because it's not just you, but it's your family. It's everyone. Um, everyone needs their family to uh, get through life and to be a contributing citizen. So thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, Mara. Yes, Mr. Bridges. Yes, um, Magistrate Feeney, again, uh -huh. I want to just echo the comment that's been made. Tremendous service to the community of 45 years or um, <laughs> is a long time. And we appreciate your service to the community and dedication to, uh, to the community. Your wonderful family here today is also in recognition of the fact that they, um, they uh, I have a lot of respect for you and appreciation for you. So thank you for your service and we look forward to seeing you around in the community. Thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome. What else? I would like to take a point of privilege. Um, this is very bittersweet for me as well. You know, um, mentors come in all sizes, shapes, and colors. And uh, Dennis, your your attitude toward inclusion and fairness and justice and community spirit have taught me a lot over the years that I've served on city council. And that is treating everybody equally without, um, and, and recognizing that everybody who comes before you should have a fair shot. And I've tried to do that as mayor and as a state representative. And a lot of that I learned from you, just the dignity of the human spirit and your support for Starfish and all of the other wonderful organizations that you have helped out are just um, blessed to have had you as a part of um, them. And I know that we will truly miss you as a magistrate, but certainly not as a wonderful citizen of this community. And I, I wish you and your family and Lynn all the best 
and stay safe out there, wear a mask, and uh, we will all look forward to getting together and toasting your retirement in person, um, hopefully when we can all start to get together soon. So thank you for everything. Thank you very much for all of you. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's very lovely to be a member of the community like this and to, uh, and to have such good friends uh, all over the community. And it's a wonderful community to live in and a wonderful community to support and work for. And so once again, I thank you very much for this honor. It was unexpected, but deeply appreciated. Thank you so much. It's our pleasure it was the least we could do. So thank you. Uh, we will be mailing that proclamation out to you. And um, as always, if you need anything from the city, we're here for you. Thank Anyone you. else? Okay, we're gonna say goodbye, continue on with your night. And goodbye, Feeney family, all of you that are joined on here. I see several generations of Feenies and uh, it's just been nice to see you all out there. Uh, and the Feeney dog that is wandering around um, one of the family homes. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank um, you very much. Okay, and, and we will move on now to correspondence. Does anybody have any, yes, Dr. Massey. No, no, you're just waving goodbye. Okay. Um, does anybody have any correspondence to report that we all didn't receive? There it is. Anybody? Okay. Um, and I, I think we've all been copied on the same correspondence in the last few weeks. Um, we will now move to the consent agenda and Mayor Pro Tem Boloar will read the items on the consent agenda. All items listed under the consent agenda are considered routine by city council and will be enacted in one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or citizen so requests in which event that item will be removed from the consent, consent agenda and added for further consideration on the regular agenda. Okay. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Boloar, would you please read the consent agenda? Sure. Uh, the consent agenda for tonight is as follows. I recommended approval of a collective bargaining agreement with the Command Officers Association of Michigan, CMR 1204. Uh, the next one is recommended approval of award of a community center renovation bid pack number six, construction site final cleaning of pro image facility services in the amount of $71,797.50. And that's CMR 1 21 05. Number 10, recommended approval of renewal of contract for soft drink pouring for special services to PepsiCo for a one year term. And that's CMR 12106. The next one, I recommended approval of extension of bid award for as needed audio visual goods and services with ABI SBL LLC for three years with extensions. And that's CMR 1-21-07. Number 12, the next one, recommended approval of purchase of subscription for access backup and recovery as a service with access interactive and the total amount of $85,640, including initial setup costs with possible extensions. And that's CMR 120-21-08. The next one, our recommended approval of extension of agreement for the 2021 spring summer citywide planting program with Cremboli Nursery Incorporated. And that's CMR 1 21 09. Uh, number 14, recommended approval of the purchase of golf carts for Farmington Hills Golf Club with EasyGo, Textron in the amount of $1,096,900, and that's CMR 1-21-10. Uh, 
the next item on the agenda because as recommended approval of purchase of additional swap loader attachments for road maintenance equipment with truck and trailer specialties in an amount not to exceed $22,500. And that's CMR 1-21-11. The next item, recommended approval of the lease of City Hall Tower and Equipment Shelter Space for New Singular Wireless PCS LLC. That's AT&T uh, for five years with renewal option CMR 1-21-12. The next one is the recommended approval for the recommended approval of the city council study session minute meetings of December 14th, 2020. And the last item on the agenda is number is recommended approval for the city council regular session minute meetings of December 14th. 2020. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Is there any questions or is there a motion? Uh, this is Mary Newland. I just want to make one comment just so the public kind of knows. Um, of course, you know, number 14 even caught my eye at $196,900 to spend on golf carts. But when I really looked at it, just so the public really knows, it's not like frivolous spending we're doing here. It's because we need to replace things that, you know, it's just like your car, you have to replace be it before they, you can't replace them and or get a good rebate on, so to say. So, um, and again, uh, with summer coming up and we saw the social distance, uh, I think the golf carts and the golfing area will be very well used. Uh, I've never been to the golf cart, though I've ever golfed, but um, once I read about it, I think it's not frivolous spending, it's something we need to do. Okay, anyone else? Is there a motion? A uh, motion Mayor, to accept yes. as written? Go okay. Ahead, Mayor, uh, go ahead. Um, Ms. Newland, could you repeat your motion? Yes. No, Michael, go ahead. Okay. okay. No, Bridges. no. I was going to yield to you for the motion. No, I'm just, I, I wanted to say that let's, uh, I move that council approve the consent, consent agenda as read by the Mayor Pro Tem Bowyer. I'll okay. second. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. Bridges, seconded by Ms. Newland. This is a roll call vote. Council members Bullware? Yes. Massey? Yes. Bridges? Yes. Knoll? Yes. Newland? Yes. And Mayor Barnett? Yes. Thank you. Okay, and that brings us to item number unnumbered, uh, public questions and comments. Does anybody, has anybody sent any public questions and comments in, or is there anybody on the Zoom meeting that wishes to address the council for no more than five minutes um, on items that are not currently listed on the agenda? Uh, we do have Marsha Gershenson, who Ashley will um, now allow to speak to make some comments. Okay, great. Um, it's County Commissioner Gershenson. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, Hello. I wish I, could be, I wish I could be there in person. I, I just wanted to wish everybody a happy new year. And I certainly hope there will be some of the happy part of that in 2021. Um, I, there are so many residents out there that are uh, facing such difficult times. I just wanted to uh, reiterate some of the resources that the county offers. We have a help hotline for non-medical information. And you all this information, all these numbers are on our website, oakgov.com. Also, for those of you that are listening that need some food, some extra food, Forgotten Harvest is hosting free pop-up pantries all over the county. And you just have to check their website for their locations. Uh, for those of you that need COVID tests or are waiting for your vaccine, you need to call our nurse on call number, which is 1-800-848-5533, so that you can uh, either schedule a COVID appointment, COVID test, or sign up for your vaccine. And then for those people that are 
dealing with mental health issues, and I've, I've heard the, the statistics are pretty staggering uh, of all of us that are dealing with, uh, with issues. Uh, the, mental, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services has a warm line, which connects residents with certified peer support specialists who have lived the experiences of behavioral health issues, trauma, or personal crisis, and are trained to support and empower. They're open seven days a week, and their number is 888-733-7753. Any residents out there, if, if there's resources that you need, uh, the county is offering so many different types. I hope that you'll reach out to me through the mayor or through um, through the the offices of Farm City of Farmington Hills or your clerk Pam Smith, uh, so that I can fill you in on what's available. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe. Thank you very much. You stay safe too, and thank you for all the hard work the county is doing um, to keep us safe and protected. We really appreciate it. Um, You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to address us during public questions and comments? I don't see any other hands raised um, from the attendees at this time. Okay, so we will move on then to council members comments and announcements. Does anybody have anything to say? Uh, Mayor? Yes, Mr. Bridges. Yes, I, you know, on Monday, uh, we celebrate, I, I'm not Monday, January 18th is Martin Luther King Day in Farmington Hills. So the public library is having a number of programs, all virtual, and I would urge everyone in the public and council members to uh, attend. But yes, it's on Monday, January 18th, Martin Luther King Day for Farmington Hills. Uh, I'm sure the uh, manager, Mexico is going to speak about it as well, but I wanted to make that comment. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Any other council member uh, questions or comments? Yes. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Bolivar. Yes. I just want to add to what Michael said about the Martin Luther King Day celebration that's being uh, offered the library. There is, for those who uh, want to have some more social interaction, there will be a vehicle procession uh, instead of the normal parade. And the, that will be beginning at, I believe, the Caustic Center at 11 o'clock. And it will proceed down to Narden Park Church. Okay. Those who are interested. Okay. Yes. Dr. Massey? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. And um, I just wanted to mention another community event, which is the ability to go donate blood and give back to the community. And that way, um, the Caustic Center is hosting our blood drive. We always see it in January, and it'll be Wednesday, January the 13th. And I realize I'm suddenly looking over here because that's where the calendar is. So it's just my explanation. <laughs> um, but it's January 13th, starts at eight o'clock in the morning. Visit to the Red Cross website to make an appointment. And it's a great way to ensure that we can help our fellow residents. Okay. Anyone else? Um, I would like to add that. Um, if you are 65 years of age or older, you are in category 1B and you are, um, it's available for you to sign up for a COVID vaccine by making an appointment through Oakland County Department of um, Community Health. Or if you are a, if you have a primary care physician who is a Beaumont doctor, um, you can go to the My Beaumont website um, for your doc where you, enter your document information or find your document information and you can sign up through the Beaumont system to make an appointment. Um, the numbers of vaccines through Beaumont are very <laughs> limited, however, and they will be um, doing a blind draw to allocate those appointment times out. So um, that's the new update on that. And uh, we want you again to remember to social distance, stay masked when you're out and about and um, be very careful. There is a large uptick in cases right now, and we don't want to lose any more Farmington Hills residents. So please be stay safe and careful. Um, and now we'll move on to uh, the city manager update. That's you, Mr. Mekin. Me Mekjin. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. That. That's right. 
So um, thank you, uh, Mayor and Council, and Happy New Year to everybody. Hope you all had a good holiday season. Um, uh, Jackie and Michael, you sold my thunder, and Ken, you did too. So um, just, uh, just to add on to the MLK Day event, um, for those that are interested, please visit the Farmington Community Library website for um, additional information and scheduling of, of uh, the virtual events as well. There's, there are several that are planned for that day. Uh, the only other thing that I have to share is um, City Council, or City Council, City uh, Hall continues to be closed to the public. Staff is reporting to work. We are there. Uh, uh, taxes are due in February. Um, I encourage every everybody that has to do that, everybody that's listening that needs to do business paying taxes, especially. Um, um, we have a variety of ways to pay your bill virtually. Um, whether that's online, um, there's you can pay by credit card, you can pay with a pay with a uh, automated clearinghouse transaction. Um, you can write a check and, and drop it in the mail, uh, and you can also drop it in uh, our drop boxes over by the clerk's office and, and in front of the police department. Um, for extenuating circumstances, um, please call the city uh, if we have to make an appointment. Uh, to to uh, to do business with the city, and we will do our very best to accommodate you. And we wanted to thank everybody for their patience. Hopefully, as the vaccine continues to roll out, we can get to some sort of normalcy again and open the doors up and protect everybody's health at the same time. So, thank you. Okay. Um, next is a public hearing, a public hearing and consideration of the service agreement with CARES of Farmington Hills and the public disclosure of the volunteer relationship between council member Massey and CARES of Farmington Hills, CMR 1-21-01. Um, and I guess we turn this over to Charmaine. Yes. Oh, okay, good. You're there. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Council Members. I am Charmaine kettler schmalt of the Community Development Office. I'm here before you this evening to give you information and answer any questions necessary for the public hearing consideration of the service agreement with CARES of Farmington Hills and public disclosure of the volunteer relationship between Council Member Massey and CARES of Farmington Hills. As a bit of background, for those who aren't familiar, uh, the City Council recognized the need for additional food bank and food services to eligible residents of Farmington Hills in April of 2020. Uh, a request was presented for funding of, uh, from CARES of Farmington Hills. At that meeting, Council Member Massey disclosed his connection to the food bank and did not participate in those discussions or vote for approval of the regular CDBG funds. In June, additional funding was available uh, and approved by city council for food bank and food distribution for eligible residents with our first round of CDBG COVID funding. And then we went through some reviews. Uh, the Detroit Housing and Urban Development Field Office and the Federal Office of General Counsel uh, reviewed all of the actions of City Council and our supporting documentation. And they determined that a public disclosure of this relationship was necessary in order to finalize our waiver and exception requests to HUD. Uh, Council Member Massey has disclosed in a sworn statement that he has a volunteer relationship with CARES of Farmington Hills. He is one of the incorporators of that organization. He continues to act as director and officer of the nonprofit. He nor anyone in his family has any interest in any company that does business with CARES of Farmington Hills, nor does he or anyone in his family receive any compensation from CARES of Farmington Hills. Per the federal regulations regarding that conflict of interest, CFR 570.611B, uh, the relationship is required to be disclosed. Uh, this general rule is that no persons described in paragraph C of this section who exercise or have exercised any function or responsibilities with respect to CDBG activities assisted under this part 
or who are in a position to participate in decision-making process or gain inside information with regard to such activities may obtain a financial interest or benefit from a CDBG assisted activity or have any financial interest in a contract, subcontract or agreement with respect to a CDBG assisted activity or with respect to proceeds of the CDBG activity either for themselves or those whom they have business or immediate family ties during their tenure or for one year thereafter. In this case, council member Massey is in a position to participate in decision-making process with respect to CDBG activities and in a position to gain inside information with regard to CDBG activities, including which organizations receive CDBG funds. As council member Massey is part of that organization to request and possibly receive CDBG funds, Councilmember Massey did not participate in those decisions and has since recused himself from discussion and abstained from voting on the issue at the April 13th, 2020 council meeting. According to the federal regulations, any re individual in this position cannot obtain a financial benefit from CDBG funds. Councilmember Massey nor his family receive any financial interest in the proceeds of any CDBG assisted activity. Therefore, the city attorney of Farmington Hills has reviewed the circumstances for potential conflicts with state and local conflict of interest policies. And he has determined in his opinion that this matter would not violate state or local laws. And there should be no conflict in the federal regulations. I have attached uh, to your packet, the public notice that was published regarding the meeting this evening, January 11th before the city council and that was published in the Farmington Observer on December 27, 2020. I'm available for questions either now or after the public hearing. Thank you. Okay. And Mr. Jopic, did you wanna say anything at this moment? Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Yes, Jopic. I just wanted to add that um, uh, that was, part of that was read obviously as a requirement of the of HUD uh, for purposes of this meeting. So I, I know it uh, sounded a little odd uh, possibly, but it was required to be read into the record and it will be included in the minutes. Uh, it would also be reiterated by reference as part of the next agenda item as well. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear for council that that is what this is about. There's been a lot of communication with HUD regarding this and they are very particular about it. Okay. Um, just to make clear for the public before we open the public hearing that um, one of our uh, former mayors and current council member, Dr. Massey, is very involved with CARES, which is a nonprofit community organization. And because he is involved, we have to jump through a few extra public hoops in order to make sure that everybody is aware that he receives no financial benefit at all from his volunteer activities in serving the citizens of Farmington and Farmington Hills. And I wanna thank Dr. Massey for stepping forward and for working with CARES and doing such a great job in delivering food and other supplies and necessary aid to uh, the residents of Farmington and Farmington Hills, especially during this very difficult COVID-19 period when there is so much food insecurity and other insecurity throughout our community. So I wanna thank you for that, Dr. Massey. And um, we will open the public hearing now. Um, is there anybody who would like to say anything at this time? Uh, Mayor, I do not see any hands raised from the attendees. Okay, then I will now officially close the public hearing and bring it back to council. Um, and uh, I see that Mr. Bridges has his hand raised. Yes, I do. Just want again, I want to echo the comments made by the mayor regarding our council member uh, Massey's involvement with CARES and the tremendous uh, work he's done there. And the fact that I, I attended one of those uh, food pantry programs, uh, handouts, uh, I think three, four months ago, and the need is great. And uh, Council Member Massey, we, we appreciate your efforts there and with work you've done there over the years and we appreciate you done there. I have a motion in regards to this okay, matter. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I was, uh, it's recommended, I, I re resolve that the City Council approve the Community Development Block Grant, uh, PY, it was, uh, Black Grant uh, PY 
CBG funding in the amount of $5,000 and the CBG CB funding in the amount of $52,600 for, for food, food distribution services, income eligible Harmony Hills residents. Further resolve that the acting city manager be authorized to prepare and execute the service agreement with CARES of Farmington Hills, subject to authorization from HUD. Okay, is there a second? I support. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. Bridges, supported by uh, council member pro tem, Jackie Bolware. Is there um, any further discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Council members Massey. Abstain. Bridges. Yes. Noel? Yes. I'm sorry, that was yes? Yes. No? Okay. Yes. Uh, Newland? Yes. Bolaware? Yes. And Mayor Barnett? Yes. Um, Dr. Massey, would you like to add anything? Well, thank you for the motion. Um, and yes, it does seem like it's something, <laughs> there's a lot of legalese that went into this. But it's very important that people understand this was started, uh, the, the entire concept of the food pantry, the clothing pantry, and the other things that CARES does was started as a community program for our residents. And CARES, we, we hear about it as CARES, but it's Community Action Resource Empowerment Services. And if you look at the mission statement for this organization, we... Um, have a lot of things that go on at CARES so that are supported by philanthropy and so forth, a lot of donations. But Mayor, you alluded to it, a lot of those things we had to put on hold because the focus is being able to deliver food to our residents and really step this up during COVID because it has been a challenge. Mr. Bridges, you actually experienced that. When we did the parking, uh, we had to reconfigure the parking lot to allow people to come through. And we had almost a two mile yeah. lineup of vehicles and all our chief King is on the line. And I want to thank his department for actually getting, they, they had to come out to help us direct traffic. That's how great this need is. It's not going away anytime soon. But if you look at the needs of people, First and foremost, it's those physiological needs, things like food and shelter that people need first. And then if we can participate in one small way, that's what all the volunteers at CARES are dedicated to doing. So thank you for moving forward on this. And if anybody wants to donate, um, the one thing people talk about as well, maybe we can do food drives and things like that. It's actually more efficient to donate money to the organization because $1 with the connections through cleaners and forgotten harvest and so forth actually buys about four to four and a half dollars worth of food. And it's, uh, the need is great. And these are our neighbors, so we've got to take care of them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next is a public hearing uh, for the consideration of Community Development Block Grant, CDBG program year. 2019 Annual Action Plan Amendment um, with additional COVID funding, CMR 1-21-02. Back to Charmaine. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, it's our lucky night. Uh, this public hearing is specifically for an amendment to our 2019 uh, Annual Action Plan, specifically to address our second round of CDBG, CB funding, which is specifically for the preparation, uh, preventing or responding to the COVID situation. Uh, the allocation was authorized from the federal government through the Housing and Urban Development Department. And we've been allocated in this second round, $334,118. HUD had been allowed with this allocation to have certain waivers uh, and allowances. And one of those allowances is for virtual meetings, uh, which we're thankful for. Uh, all eligible CDBG activities have to meet one of three national objectives. 
Uh, they have to benefit low and moderate income families, uh, aid in the prevention of slum or blight, or meet a need having a particular urgency. The Community Development Office reached out to local nonprofit organizations in our area to inform them of the opportunity to apply for this most recent round of funding. And we received applications from three organizations expressing the need for food bank and food distribution, mortgage and rental, and utility assistance. Um, so we've put together a budget uh, for review by council, and then we will be submitting this to HUD for approval to add program administration in the amount of $36,000, food bank food distribution in the amount of $103,118, and mortgage rent and utility assistance in the amount of $119,000. Uh, I'm available to answer questions now or after the public hearing. The hearing was published in the Farmington Observer on December 27th, uh, 2020. Okay. okay. Mr. Jaffick? Yes. Uh, this, I believe that there are funds that would be going to CARES under this as well. So the same, uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, and if I'm mistaken about that, by the way, please let me know. But that's my understanding that funds will be going to CARES again. So uh, the same exact public statement that Ms. kettler Schmolt read for the last public hearing will apply here and will need to be a, a part of the minutes. Uh, that is the part of the disclosure regarding 24 of the Code of Federal Regulations 570.611B, uh, conflicts of interest and, and the exact same discussion we had about that relative to Council Member Massey and the full disclosure of that my legal uh, opinion that is in your packet and was provided uh, concerning this matter, the, the same um, conclusions are reached on my part in that regard as well. I just wanted to make that clear for council and the public before proceeding with the public hearing. Okay, I would like to now open the public hearing officially. It is now open. Is there anybody who has their hand raised, Ms. Smith? Uh, there is not. Okay, uh, we will now officially close the public hearing and bring it back to council. But I also want to say something first. I believe this is the first time we are able to add mortgage rental and utility assistance to um, this program. Am I correct in that? Yes, uh, this is the first time that we've had that as part of our services to the community. Uh, we were fortunate enough to find a couple of partners, three partners that are able and willing to work with us on, on that activity. Okay, so again, this is part of um, our mission as a community to make sure that no one goes hungry or homeless and we do have um, assistance included in this COVID grant money for that. Um, is there a motion or discussion? There's a motion. We have one quick question. Yes. Um, and that is, I noticed one of the organizations um, has worked in Royal Oak before, um, but it didn't specifically say that they've worked in Farmington Hills before. Um, obviously, this block grant money would be for Farmington Hills. Does this organization um, have the contacts and the um, wherewithal and know with how to, to, to work in Farmington Hills? And find the clients and, and help them efficiently and effectively is, or will the city be working with on, on that as far as identifying the folks in Farmington Hills that need the assistance? So I've talked with the uh, providers about- That was the Legal Aid and Defender Association I'm speaking to. Yes, yes. I've spoken with um, all the folks that are looking to be our providers based upon approvals, of course, and what we've decided, um, what I feel is the most efficient would be for the city to receive initial applications and then distribution to all of our providers uh, so that we can make sure that we're most efficient in get, getting information to our residents and getting them to providers that can service their needs most efficiently. The, the folks at the US uh, Legal Aid and Defender Association have worked with residents of Farmington Hills, but they haven't been partners with us in the past. So they're very familiar with what's necessary in order to facilitate and assist 
the residents, not only with their mortgage, rental, and utility assistance, but with any legal assistance that they may need if they're going through a foreclosure process. They started that with the city of Royal Oak back in April of this year. And they've also assisted a couple of other communities with that service as well. So even though we haven't had a previous relationship with them, they have the background and knowledge to assist us. And it's gonna be coming through my office to distribute to all the providers that we have Great. available. So the city will act as a clearinghouse. Great, thank yes, you. That's correct. That was thank a you. question. Okay, is there a motion? Mr. Bridges. Thank you, oh, Madam Mayor. I resolve that the city council approves the community development block grant CB3 budget to include number one, $36,000 for program administration, number two, $103,118 for food bank and food distribution, and number three, $195,000 for mortgage rental utility assistance. Further resolve that this active city manager be authorized to prepare and submit the CBDG uh, CB3 substantial amendment to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development to include PY 2019 Annual Action Plan Amendment and that the active city, active city manager is authorized to prepare and execute necessary agreements to implement the activities listed above. Okay, is there a second to the motion? This is a very good I second. Okay, uh, it's been uh, seconded by uh, Council Member Newland and Council Member Knoll. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Council members Bridges? Yes. Noel? Yes. Newland? Yes. Bolaware? Yes. Massey? Abstain. And Mayor Barnett? Yes. So thank you all very much. Uh, next is unfinished business. Uh, number five, consideration approval of the enactment of ordinance C-1-2021, um, amending the city code chapter 34 zoning to amend the official zoning map in order to rezone the property located at 33466 Eight Mile Road, OS2 Planned Office District to B3 General Business District, rezoning request 2-7-2020 and approval of summary for publication. Madam Mayor, members yes. of council, Ed Gardner, Director of Planning and Community Development. Uh, the item before you is a request to rezone a parcel of property located on Eight Mile Road, west of Farmington Road from OS2 Planned Office District to B3 General Business District as you described. Last December 14th, council approved the introduction of this request. Tonight, council will be taking action on the enactment of this rezoning request. I'll be happy to answer any questions of council at this time. Does anyone have any questions? This is the property along Eight Mile Road? Right. Seeing no questions, is there a motion? Dr. Massey. Yes, Madam Mayor. Yes. I'm assuming, yeah, there it is. <laughs> um, and, uh, have to check that little microphone. I would move approval of the enactment of ordinance C-1-2021 amending the city code chapter 34 zoning to amend the official zoning map in order to rezone the property located at 33466 Eight Mile Road OS2 planned office district to B3 general business district rezoning request 2-7-2. 2020 and approval for summary publication. Is there a second? Second. Okay, it's been moved by Dr. Massey, supported by Mr. Bridges. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Council members, no. Yes. Newland? Yes. Bolaware? Yes. Massey? Yes. Bridges? Yes. And Mayor Barnett? Yes. Continuing on with unfinished business, number six, consideration of approval of enactment of ordinance C-2 2021 amending city code, chapter 34 zoning to amend the official zoning map in order to rezone property located at 33 
474 8 Mile Road, OS2, Planned Office District to B3, General Business District, rezoning request 3-7-2020 and approval of summary for publication. Is there any discussion or a motion or Mr. Gardner, do you wanna say anything? Madam Mayor, uh, members of council, uh, you've described this request and this parcel is adjacent to the parcel you just introduced and enacted uh, for the rezoning from OS2 to B3. Uh, last December 14th, council introduced the uh, rezoning of this request and tonight council would be taking action on the enactment of this rezoning request. I'll be happy to answer any other questions at this time. Okay, anybody have any questions? Seeing none, is there a motion? Dr. Massey. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I would move approval of the enactment of ordinance C-2-21 amending city code chapter 34 zoning to amend the official zoning map in order to rezone the property located at 33474 8 Mile OS2 planned office district to B3 general business district rezoning request 3-7-2020 and approval of summary for publication. Okay, is there a second? This is very July 2nd. Okay, it's been uh, moved by Dr. Massey, seconded by Council Member Newland. This is a roll call vote. Council Members Newland? Yes. Bolaware? Yes. Massey? Yes. Bridges? Yes. Noel? Yes. And Mayor Barnett? Yes. That brings us to new business item number seven consideration of approval of the 2021 agreement with Families Against Narcotics, FAN, Comeback Quick Response Team, QRT, CMR 1-21-03. Uh, is this for um, Chief King to take on? It is, it is, ma'am. Okay. All right, uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, uh, members of City Council. Um, I'm uh, pleased to be here to present this program uh, for the Farmington's Police Department to move forward uh, in our, uh, our efforts to provide for our community and uh, combat uh, substance uh, use disorders in our community. Um, this is a overdose wellness check program, a post overdose wellness check program that we have uh, developed with uh, FAN, which is Family Against Narcotics out of Macomb County. How we've uh, arrived here at this program, um, a little bit of data to, to and, and, and information that brought us to this, um, more than 185 people die from drug overdoses every, every day in the United States. It's about approximately eight every hour. In 2020, we, uh, the citizens of Farmington Hills, uh, lost seven of our residents due to uh, drug overdoses. Uh, in 18 and 19, um, we found ourselves responding to a lot of these um, uh, victims of uh, substance use disorders. Um, one particular case, we responded to the same individual at the same location over 12 times, um, some within six hours of them being released from the hospital. Um, this, this man uh, suffered from this disorder, uh, disrupted his, his life, his family's lives, eventually led to him losing his life to this order. In 2020, we responded to 27 uh, separate drug overdoses, administered Narcan 13 times, and that's in addition to what the farm, uh, the Farmington Hills Fire Department uh, uh, um, uh, di uh, administered. And uh, as I said, we investigated those seven deaths. Um, in 2021 alone, uh, we've responded to already two overdose cases, one individual is the third time in two months that we've responded to our house. The number one question we face from uh, families is who will help us? What can we do? How can we, uh, how can we combat this? So many communities are reaching out and developing programs. Um, we reached out with FAN and developed uh, a, a relationship with them. We have an existing relationship with them, which is our hand, uh, Hope Not Handcuffs program. And this is just a natural extension of that. Uh, the focus of this program is quite simple, save lives, assist SUD victims in uh, their families in recovery, reduce the stigma associated with SUDs, re reduce repeat uh, deployment of our emergency resources and serve the community uh, and the citizens of our community. Um, 
we have, again, um, Dan's program uh, is a quick recovery team. That team will be made up of police officers facilitating the um, personnel from FAN, the staff from FAN to help uh, provide substance abuse treatment services, recovery services, peer support services, and the, support, the services with outreach for visits and post overdose for the individual or the families. Um, when FAN developed their program, they developed their program with a study that focused, focused on teaming with three different um, emergency responders or frontline workers. They looked at developing the program with firefighters, nurses, and police officers. And the overwhelming um, uh, survey or uh, individuals that had suffered from this disorder identified police officers as 70% of the individuals they have had contact with that showed them the most compassion and the respect in dealing with their, uh, their disorder. Um, so FAN teamed with uh, the police departments. Um, with our department specifically, uh, our officers that are going to be certified to uh, participate in the program have already attended a four hour free training course provided by um, uh, FAN. The program is going to be managed by our investigative division. Uh, the coordinating contacts will be made on Mondays and Thursdays of each week. All documents and materials will be provided by FAN. And the QRT officers, the quick response team officers, will be plainclothes detectives supported by a uniformed officer. Currently, FAN has, uh, has had about 50, over 5,100 participants go through their program since February of 2017. Farmington Hills is going to be the ninth Michigan Police Department to participate with FAN, and 75 police departments in the nation have uh, programs like this. Wow. Are there any questions? A uh, quick question, I do, Mr. Uh, Madam Mayor. Um, okay. Appreciate Council it. Privileges? Yes. Thank you. Um, this deals primarily with opioids, right? That's it. Nothing to do with heroin, none of those things, right? Primarily uh, opioids. No, the, no, I, I apologize, sir. It's a overdose. Uh, it's an overdose recovery team. It doesn't matter on the drug. It will just be uh, whatever overdose, whatever drug they choose to overdose or they have overdose on, we would respond and treat them uh, it, it, with the same program. Okay. I, I, I thought I was in the pressure. It was only opioids, but you're saying it's for any could, cocaine, could be cocaine, could be uh, uh, heroin or opioids. Any kind of substance use disorder. Thank you. Appreciate that for clarification. Appreciate it. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, Ms. Knoll, Council yeah. Member Knoll. Not so much a question, but a comment. I am familiar, uh, pretty familiar with Families Against Narcotics um, and I've heard several presentations by the lady who actually started it. And uh, it's, it's, it's a great organization. They seem to uh, have been making a lot of success. And uh, I think it's wonderful that our police department is getting even more involved with them. You know, they always say the number one Thing that helps you recover um, or that you need as a family structure. Um, it, it's so beneficial in having a structure, whether it's friends or families, but having yourself surrounded by people that are there to help you rather than bring you down and bring you back into a negative environment where you may engage again. So um, in, in harmful activities. Um, so, and this is, is, part of what they are about is, is providing that support team, a positive, positive reinforcement to encourage you and help you um, through uh, these tough times. So I, I think this is a great thing and I'm very supportive of it. Okay, anyone else? Uh, is it just a comment, Mary Newland? Okay. Um, I, I, Mary, I'll get you right oh. after um, Jackie. Uh, okay. Mayor Pro Tem Bolaware. You need to unmute. I wonder I'm going in and out. Uh, it seemed like a really a great program, but I was wondering if there's been any consideration, you know, to having a social worker of some site, of some sort on this. We're losing you. <laughs> uh, meeting with people who have, you know, issues, whether they're mental or what uh, substance abuse, alcohol addiction, the first contact with this program is, program is with the police going out uh, to the person's home to make the initial contact. And I'm thinking, is that the best 
use of that resource when they don't, do they have the skills necessary or would be better if they had some type of social worker um, on staff that can make those types of co initial calls? Mr. Uh, yes, Chief yeah. I'm sorry, if you're if you're asking um, whether the the police department would be the appropriate how this program begins is yeah. based on an overdose. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah. How we get involved. Um, mm -hmm. This is the, the recovery after the fact and the response team that mm -hmm. only we would be uh, aware of once that mm -hmm. overdose is responded to and we have that intervention. Fan created this program with mm -hmm. law enforcement based on their interaction with mm -hmm. uh, individuals who suffer from this disorder mm -hmm. and their um, outreach or their uh, interest, their comfort level was mm -hmm. highest with police officers based on what they uh, experienced with past experiences, past contacts. And they mm -hmm. focused on three people, the nurses mm -hmm. uh, and, and medical staff at hospitals, mm -hmm. fire department, mm -hmm. uh, personnel, uh, uh, emergency responders that have responded mm -hmm. to them and then the police officers that responded to them. So this is FANS program that we're bringing and implementing mm -hmm. with our traditional uh, law enforcement role of first responders responding mm -hmm. to that house and intervening mm -hmm. to try to have those life-saving measures on those individuals. Um, FAN doesn't really venture into mental health per se, um, although that there's many mental health issues associated with some of the uh, parallels of, of the SUDS. Um, our department is working with uh, the Michigan um, Department of Health and Human Services. They are in a pilot program right now that I participated on the, uh, the developmental board, um, which has resulted in a um, regional outreach for mental health, specifically for mental, uh, mental health. And what one of the uh, uh, pilot uh, areas that they're doing testing or, or research on is Oakland County through um, uh, common ground and, and, and our area in Oakland County specifically. So we are involved in that at, at, at this time also. Yeah, no, I, I think, I think it's a really a, a great program that, you know, after that, an overdose situation that there's a program to come out and help those individuals get back on the right track. But I was noticing that the initial contact after the overdose Situation in um, and the uh, the uh, addiction field that it's, it was always best for to have someone with uh, expertise in that area to make the first uh, contact, you know, with that person. But what you're saying is that according to the study done by um, the Families Against uh, Narcotics, they've discovered that the best person to come out am i frozen i yeah a little i a little bit uh, i i think i can clarify yeah police officers police officers are are the initial uh on their initial response mm -hmm. we, will, we will team with fan staff to go out and make that follow-up that quick response follow-up police officers facilitate that interaction where we need to uh, have the individual that suffers from that um, volunteer for it. We can't make them. We can't make mm -hmm. them enter into recovery. Mm -hmm. We facilitate the uh, coordination and the response, uh, introducing and having them communicate with the FAN personnel. What FAN uh, staff is going to be a peer recovery coach, uh, family recovery coach, and a program oversight and direction coordinator. Farmington Hills police officers aren't going to manage them in their recovery. We're just going to no. one. No, I, yeah, I, I understand that part. Yeah, I understand that part. I was just thinking about the initial uh, point of interaction after the overdose. Oh, yeah. As a uh, initiate that contact between, you know, the support services and that member that the person that's going out there to make that happen is the police officer as opposed to maybe a social worker or some other you know medical professional that we have uh, here in farmington hills but i, I understand what you're saying okay. but Thank it's you. also my understanding she King, that the officers that participate in this program have gone through extra training for it yes ma'am 
Okay. So they're trained uh, above and beyond what they do as police officers yeah. to utilize this particular program. And their, their role is, is specifically to facilitate the transfer from our interaction to the fan support staff that then takes them the, 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 the additional steps. Very good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Council member Newland. I was just going to comment that, you know, we need as many tools as we can, as many supports as we can. I mean, I know our department has already been already very uh, progressive in terms of Narcan training. We've had several times where we've had community, not only the Farmington Hills community, but people coming from all communities surrounding us to participate for Narcan training. So again, it's just, this is another great, great program, another support to, um, support our residents. Okay, um, Dr. Massey. I have a motion. Thank you. I would move that City Council approve the city manager be, to be authorized to execute the 2021 participation with Families Against Narcotics or FAN, Comeback Quick Response Team or QRT, and the City of Farmington Hills and any associated documents or agreements. Okay, is there a second? Or okay, it's been seconded by um, Council Member Bridges. Um, Ms. Bolloway, did we answer all your questions? You're mute. I know, but I can read her lips better than I can see you frozen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm no, doing much no, better no. now. <laughs> no, no. Uh, my question is answered. My, I guess my main question was the fact why was the police officer making the, the introduction? Initial contact? See, she was doing much better when she was speaking. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So he, he did answer my. I, I okay. think it's, I think it's a great program. Yes, I do. Okay. Good. Okay. Well, um, this is a roll call mm. vote. Council members Bolower. Yes. Massey. Yes. Bridges. Yes. Noel. Yes. Newland? Yes. And Mayor Barnett? Yes. Um, now we move on to um, the attorney's report. Does anybody have any questions? Not at this time. Okay. Hearing none, that brings us to da -da, adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. It's moved Support. by Council Member Bridges, seconded by Support. Dr. Massey. Okay, this is a roll call vote. Council members Massey? Yes. Bridges? Yes. Noel? Yes. Newland? Yes, and now you can see me. <laughs> yes, we can. Now we can see you. Bolaware? Yes. And Mayor Barnett? Yes. And um, we're at the end of tonight's agenda for our regular council meeting. Um, we will be uh, meeting again in a study session for goal setting. Uh, if the public is interested in um, tuning in to our Zoom meeting for that, that will be this Saturday morning at 9 a.m., convening at 9 a.m. Uh, so we're done now and we will reconvene as a council uh, for study session on Saturday morning. Good night, Farmington Hills. Good night. Good night.